So in another tutorial, um, we made it so that our cube could move around and then when you press spacebar, it would instantiate an object for us called MySphere, which we have right here in the project pane. Um, that's pretty useful, but another really useful thing is talking to game objects in your scene um, in different ways. So uh, maybe to change the game state, um, <clears throat> etc. So uh, I'm going to create a new game object here, and it's going to be an empty object because this object doesn't really do anything in our game. All it has is a transform. Um, but even that transform doesn't really mean anything for us. We're going to click on game object and give it a name. I'm going to call it game data. Um, <clears throat> and then we're going to give game data a script. The script that we're going to give it is a, a basic counter script. So we'll say counter. Go in there. So here we have the counter.javascript. So let's just expose a simple variable. We'll call it count type int. And in our start, let's initialize the count to zero. So you can probably guess what we're going to do here. Um, we're going to drag uh, counter onto game data. There we go, it's right there every time we instantiate a new sphere we're gonna talk to game data and we're gonna inform it that hey there's a new sphere in our scene so let's increase our count by one so now that it has that script um, let's go into the move my object script in the move my object script we're all we're going to do is find the object that we've just created and uh, send a message to the script on the game data object that we've added a new sphere. So we will use the game object dot find function. Now there's a lot of different ways to find objects in Unity. You can find objects of certain types, you can find objects that have certain tags that you can define yourself. <coughs> In this case, we're going to use probably the worst version of all of those, but at the same time, a pretty convenient one. Um, we'll say find, and in here, as a string, we'll type in the name of the object that we want to find, which is game data. Now, because that returns the object we're interested in, we can also access game components off of that object. So we can type dot again, get component and then we can type the name of the script that we're interested in. If we look again, oops, the script that we're interested in is called counter. So going back here, we can say we want to find the counter script. And then we finally want to access the count variable and increment it by one. So we'll hit save, and then we'll go to play and the nice thing is is we made the count a, <clears throat> a public variable. We didn't have to but it serves our purposes pretty well because now we can actually see as we're debugging here or as we're playing uh, that count increasing if we did our job right. So let's go ahead and move around and hit space and you can see that the count has now incremented by one. Two, three, four, five and it goes on like that for a while. So that's pretty useful um, because any other object that needs access to game data can just go right in there and find that object. Um, we could have avoided having to find the object by um, exposing the object as a variable in our move my object script. So if we had gone up here and said var the counters object and made that of type game object and then come down here instead of using game object dot find we could just say the counters object hit save 
go back in and in our counters or excuse me on our cube it'll say the counters object well we don't have anything in there right now but if we click game data and drag it in there now if we hit uh, play and hit space you can see that we're getting the same result and we didn't have to do a search for it so that's pretty convenient what's another way that we can do this <clears throat> well if we look at um, the different uh, let's get rid of the counter object here if we look at the different finds game object dot find uh, let's see we can say find with tag and if we know what the tag is um, so we could say game data then we could do the same thing again get component um, our script name and then finally access the count variable but how do we have how do we know what where the tag is we have to actually make one so we go to game data and we can look up here and it says the tag and it's untagged so if you go here um, we can go and add a tag and well it looks like I've already made one but let's do that again there we go game data and then when we go to tag well, that's weird it's not showing up Under, oh, that's a layer. So maybe if we go over here and we give it a tag game data. Now, if we go back to game data, tag, there it shows up. So we hit that and looking at our script just to make sure I wrote it right. Yes, it's underscore or excuse me, not underscore, but lowercase g. Um, hit save, play, and again, the same result. If you're not familiar with, uh, <coughs> well, before I get into that, let's figure out how we can optimize this. Um, so one really good way would be to make a private variable with the object that we want to talk to a lot. So private variable and we'll call it game data object. Type game object. So in our start function, basically once the game has started, this will be the first thing to to run for us. So then we can use the game object dot find game data. We could also use the find with tag version. Um, doesn't really matter um, and that will return our game object and we can store it in our game data object now when we uh, actually want to run this <coughs> we can just reference our game data object and we don't have to find it every single time uh, that the user hits the spacebar again if we save and run, the same result. And if you're not familiar with uh, uh, doing this all in one go, you can also simplify the process. Well, it's not necessarily simplifying the process, but it might look simpler to other people. Say we wanted to get the component first and not do anything with the count at the moment. If we want the component then we can say um, var our counter script which is of type component equals get component counter. Now we can just say our counter our computer how about that our counter script dot count. We can increment it that way. Go to hit play again 
and not a member of oh well of course it's not it's because this is not actually of type component it's of type counter so we play again there we go and uh oh object reference not set to an instance of an object why would that be Let's see if I can get I don't want to maximize that so we get the counter script and we increment that hmm. game data object ah this is because we still need to talk to the game data object that we found we can't call get, get component statically or else it's looking for a component that exists on the object that this script is currently attached to but because the move my object script is attached to our cube and not the game data object it doesn't it doesn't find anything so let's hit play again and there we go the same result so hopefully that explains some of the mystery of talking to different game objects and accessing components or scripts that exist on different game objects. Again, your options are you can expose variables, you can find them using a variety of different find functions, um, and finally, if you want, you can even get down to a closer level and just talk to um, particular scripts so if this game data object had a lot of different scripts and we wanted to uh, have access to those <clears throat> all the time again you could uh, also make another private variable or you could change the game data object uh, completely to a counter type you can call it game counter and in here once we've in here when we've got uh, we've got the game data object let's call it game counter equals game object dot find dot game data dot get component counter so now we have access to just that script <clears throat> and we can say our counter dot count plus plus um, save that hit play and then identify our counter what did I do game counter excuse me and once again when we hit space the same result so um, the oops, the general uh, gist of it is um, if you're going to be talking to a script or a game object or you need access to those things at runtime um, and you'll be talking to them often then make do one search and get it at the start and you can have it in a private variable so you don't expose it to the editor or you can have it um, as a public variable so that and it generally tends to be a lot easier as a public variable just because you can um, people who maybe aren't familiar with code can uh, go in there and click and drag things and do sort of a almost a meta programming of click and drag um, but this works for for us and this works for anything so if you needed to talk to a game object in our scene that actually um, did have a physical uh, presence um, or, or a visual presence anyway um, it works the exact same way um, you can also get uh, groups of game objects so you can have a, a arrays of game objects and loop through them and tell them 
and and talk to them as long as you've ex exposed a way to talk to them like we have with the dot count um, <clears throat> if we wanted to keep this a little bit um, um, more slightly better software oriented we wouldn't really expose count we'd have something like dot add to count like that which would increment it, the internal private variable by one so but that's it for now hope you enjoyed it